Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble. And we go from now until midnight Eastern Time. Okay, here we go. Let me see here. Let's uh, let's call our old friend here. The Aryan People's Committee proudly presents the classic children's holiday films, Santa Claus Conquers the Jews, and the Crystal Knock that almost wasn't at the Duke Theater. Hello? Hello. <laughs> That's my little holiday joke. And that's Stephen Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. Da, 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 thank da, da, you. Da, da, thank da. you very much. All up and happy and peppy at this hour. Yes, right. Calling him all the way in Lost Wages, Nevada, where the only way Lost. you can get ahead in Lost Wages is when you leave to walk into the propeller. Thank you. Lady <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, 1904. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, things, those things always keep working. Yeah. And never, it's a perennial. It gets better as it gets older. Yeah, yeah. Well, so is it true that what uh, what uh, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, especially if it's me, because nothing happens. Well, it, it, it's, it careers stay in Vegas. What happens in Vegas <laughs> stays in my bedroom. That's there's nothing going on here. Have you found anything? Have you found anything weird and interesting about the people who make Las Vegas their home? Well, uh, I found you see some desert rats on the street here and there who are like, you know, 20 years old and all wrinkly up and they look like they're 99. But uh, most of the people I've met in comedy and in commerce and going to the store and things like that have been very nice people. So, and uh, there you go. And it's uh, interesting to see, uh, you know, slot machines and the supermarkets and the methadone clinics. It, it is kind not of. That I go to the, not that I go to the supermarket. <laughs> What they love to point out is the fact that there are two different populations in Las Vegas. The the transients, which are the people who are um, seeing the sights and, you know, playing, pulling down on the slot machines, and the other ones who uh, live there. And that they, yeah. the twain never shall really meet except if maybe, you know, you're, you live there but you're a performer so you go to work. But once you go exactly. home, you leave the strip, you leave the gambling, you leave the bright lights, Right. Yep, exactly. You're just in another suburb, so it was just pretty much where I am. So, uh, you know, like anywhere else during the daytime, I pretty much stay in or I do my shopping or whatever anyone else does. But any any other suburbanite does. And uh, at night when I do my shows, of course, I walk to the casinos, ding, ding, brr, brr, ding, ding, ding. But uh, I just do my shows and I say hello afterwards and then I come back home. So yeah, that's my big uh, swing in life at the age of 63. You, you know, you kind of get the idea, however, that... Um, uh, that as opposed to other cities that have many different industries that uh, populate the town, there is really a singular industry in that town, isn't there? Well, there's gambling and there's alcohol, I well, guess. Let's there's, just say it's, so let, let's, let's give it the overall banner of entertainment. Okay. Yeah. But otherwise, they don't do anything else. They don't make airplanes. They don't have uh, nope. uh, computer companies. Uh, they don't have, nope. you know, a lot of different businesses that inhabit the area. So they're relying entirely on on the tourist trade to exactly. continue the lifeblood of that city. Yeah, gambling and entertainment is pretty much it. So, you know, uh, there, there you have it. That's what they make here. Gamblers and entertainers. Yeah. Or they take in old entertainers from elsewhere like myself. So how old are you? Over 60? Come on, we'll work it. Which I like about this place. They seem to work the older comedians, which I like a lot. Well, I think they, yeah, uh, I guess it's always been a, been the case, though, in, in Vegas. Uh, uh -huh. I, I don't remember a lot of young comics working Vegas. I mean, uh -huh. when I'm saying young, I mean guys in their 20s. You know, yeah, I, sure. I do know that, for instance, as he got older, uh, uh, Slayton had a uh, uh, 
a residency uh, at at a hotel there. I don't know what it had been the Debbie Reynolds Hotel, but then I think it became something else. And he had a residency. I think it was Hooters. There. Hooters. Yeah, he had a residency Hooters, at Hooters. Yeah. Imagine having a residency yep. at Hooters. You get paid off yeah, in yeah. chicken wings and tits. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Who can complain? Yeah. Yeah, but they, he had a he was there for about a, what a year or so something like that. Yeah, he was there for about a year, a while. So, and uh, yeah, there's there's work here, so I'm not I don't know if I want to get that residency. I'm still pretty new here, but I'm working here and there. More get, than I was in San Francisco, more he, than I was in L.A. So I forget. And, and do you make get, a few shekels at it. So oh, you say, and you get paid. Yep. Which is nice. Not a lot, but, you know, I don't say well, that. I it's, mean, it's, it's it sounds to me like you're, <laughs> on, on the average, you're working more in Vegas than you ever were in San Francisco in the recent years. Yeah, but definitely in the recent years, without a doubt. I did like three gigs a, a year in San Francisco, like two at the Throckmorton Theater, which I love. And uh, where else? One at the Punchline, and that's it. Out here, I'm all over the place, so especially the Tropicana. And uh, there's a place called the uh, Jokesters at the Hotel. Yeah. They seem to work me, so I'm uh, looking for other places, too. I'll work anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. Now, are there any of the basic, uh, I guess there's some of the some of the chains are there. Like, uh, uh-huh. uh, what what other comedy clubs are there in Vegas? Uh, well, you got Brad Garrett's place, and uh, which is across the street from the Tropicana. And then you have, there's a place called... Uh, the uh, the the Eclipse Theater, big movie theater, and they have a lounge upstairs where they have comedy shows on Wednesday, which I'm there tonight. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, there's there's other places I don't even know about. I think there's a uh, the Comedy Cellar, which I don't know if it's related to the one in New York or not, but they're here. And uh, there's all kinds of places I haven't even discovered one tenth of them yet. So slowly but surely, I'm going to scope them all out. Yeah, see who likes me and see I, who doesn't want me. You so. said Brad Garrett has has a comedy club. Oh, yeah, the Brad Garrett's Comedy Club, I think. That's what it's called. So, uh, I think, what's the name of the place? I forget, but it's right across the street from the Tropicana, yeah. where Carla Bord is a kick ass midnight show every Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, yeah. At the Laugh Factory. Yeah, well, it, it, it sounds like it was a good move for you. It is. It is a good move. And, um, you know, it's cheaper here, which is nice. And uh, just everybody I've met is real nice. And it's, it's cool. And you get to see all your friends pass through town sooner or later which is a lot of fun so or, hey where you been what are you doing or at, our age, How are you? at our age see them pass away so uh no, i don't want to say they pass through town before they pass away sometimes they do both yeah but <laughs> you know i mean uh, uh that, that's quite a town to live in you know i mean i lived in um i lived in reno for a short time uh-huh. uh and again that was i i worked out of uh, herald's club they had a studio in herald's club on the, uh, uh-huh. And Herald's all the gamblers would come by, look in the window, and see this kid doing a, a show. Ah, it's funny. Which was really Reno. funny because I wasn't twenty one, and oh, so your kid, your baby. Yeah, so but I but I was working the radio station, so uh, I had to. The, anytime I walked into the club, they had to have a security guard walk me up to the studio, so I could do my show. Uh. And anytime yeah. I had to go to the bathroom, I had to call for a security guard to take <laughs> me to the bathroom. Oh my god! And, and so like the it, comedians that are too young to, to to play the clubs because they serve alcohol. They wait outside, then they call their name, they do their set, then they go back outside again. <laughs> the one time I went to the bathroom, uh, 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 they uh, they called two security guards, and one was on either side of me at the latrine. <laughs> like the president, man. Try, try <laughs> got bodyguards to take a leak. I have enough trouble going into a little vial for my doctor, but imagine two security <laughs> guards on either side of you, and you're trying to take a leak. Yeah, I, can, <laughs> I can't. It's hard to do it with witnesses. And the, finally, the station fired me because they said we really can't. You know, we can't deal with this. You know, we can't deal with you having to always, you know. And I said, well, you know, what are you doing putting your radio fucking station in a, in a, you know. They had offices across the street, but they didn't have the studios there. Ah, uh, fuckers. KDOT in Reno, Nevada. Gee, how do I remember K-B-O-T-3. that? KDOT. Three listeners. KDOT. KDOT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they still exist. Uh, uh, I doubt it. Most of the, most radio nah, stations fine. don't exist anymore. They've changed their name so many times. You know that. That's true. It's ridiculous. Yep. The only ones yep, that no seem, more WMCA. The, the, o- the only ones that no, they do have WMCA still. 
Oh, they do? Yep. That's what they went away. Uh, oh, most of the New York it. stations have kept their names, at least the well-known ones. Like, you know, you know what stations keep their names always? Are the ones that uh -huh. have three letters. Because they're <laughs> old. They're legacy stations. And they go back oh, yeah. to the time when radio first started. And they figure there ain't going to be that many radio stations. We don't need four call letters, right? Yeah. And then all of, all of a sudden, you know, there was uh, radio was a big hit. So you had, like, anytime you see a WOR, you see KGO uh, in sure. San Francisco, uh, yep. uh, those stations are all legacy stations uh, uh -huh. and were, were around probably before anybody else. Although the first radio station in America did have four call letters, KDKA. Oh, it did? Yeah, oh, yeah. Although that may not be the first radio station. They claim it is, but they, we think the first one was in San Jose, California. Uh -huh. And later, uh, if you were to follow its lineage, it's now KCBS in San Francisco. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, I remember WORF at WOR FM in New York went to WCBS FM in the seventies or the sixties or something, but KGO is still KGO. Yeah, well, WOR radio is still WOR, still is, uh -huh. uh, and. Well, um, the, the, the station went to uh, WCBS FM, though. I remember they played the uh, mm -hmm. oldies or top 40 or something like that. And all all, hey. all stations west of the Mississippi are K's. And all the yep. ones to the right e east of the Mississippi are W's, except for two exceptions. What are those exceptions? Uh, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't CKLW, know. CKLW, Motor City. I actually think no, come from Windsor. No, okay. actually, that the Canada is C's. Yeah. And, and if you're in Mexico, it's X's. Oh, yeah. really? I did not know that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, no, uh, the, the exceptions were KDKA in, in uh, Philadelphia. Was it Philadelphia? Uh, KDKA. Which they kept its uh, call letters with the K because it was like the f supposedly the first station in the United States, and uh -huh. then the other one, which is west of the Mississippi, uh, is WACO in Waco, Texas, oh. <laughs> who went around you know wanted those call letters because it was so good you know to have it named after the city. So WACO. That's perfect. Yeah, unless they change the name to Keiko, then they can, they can change with the times. But until then, keep that W, folks. So any excuse, any excuse. So any what, excuse. What, keep is, them damn letters. So what comics do you find funny these days? These I don't know who's doing it these days. I don't know who the younger ones are. I really don't watch anybody. Um, I like the old timers, the ones who are still around. Me, Carla Bo. I like uh, who else? I like uh, Rich Scheidner. I There was a guy Steve McGrew, who's kick ass funny, who uh, I just watched uh, last weekend. There's uh, you know the ones of my generation who are still alive. I love them all. You know, Rich. They say Rich Scheidner, Bruce Brown, Denny Johnson, uh, Felicia Michaels, Carrie Snow. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? There's lots of them. But they're usually of my age, if not older. Yeah, How, but like I don't know, I've watched like snippets of younger people that just don't make me laugh. Especially they don't make me, you know, do belly laughs like uh, like the ones of my generation, the older ones do, because that was just such out there funny shit. And a lot of it today would be deemed, you know, like improper or something. But, or you know, he used the verb "we're afraid of action words." They offend three people out there. So I don't know what's going on now. I, what, I, what I've seen doesn't really make me laugh, so I try to ignore it. It's like today's music. I just. Let it sail over my head, and good luck to whoever it lands on. Well, he, here's a here's a here's a question for you: Is Amy Schumer funny? I've only watched a couple of minutes of her in my whole life, and I recognized two jokes, and one of them was said by a friend of mine in high school in 1972. So <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I, I got friend, a friend of mine, Mitchell, told me that joke on the on the high school lawn in 1972, and then years and years later, I saw a clip of Amy Schumer. It wasn't even like a joke; it was a quip. It was about somebody like it is built so well their arm looks like my leg. Or so. yeah. And she said that years and years later, and it was funnier when my friend in high school said it. God. I, she, so I, 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 don't, I don't know much about her. I really don't follow her. I know she's bigly, hugely now, but uh, from what I've seen, didn't make me double over in laughter like a lot of my my uh, favorites and my friends do. So. I, I don't understand why she's big leg. I mean, I just I watch her and I say, this isn't funny, you know? Uh, I've heard that from a lot of people who've seen her. So uh, they, the industry decided to pick her. They usually don't pick the right person. You know, they made Paulie Shaw famous once. So, you know, who the hell knows? I don't. I don't know. I don't know why 
certain people get picked and the really funny people are left out of the loop. Well, so, who was that comedian? But, uh, that, who was that the com- way it is. Who was that comedian a few years ago? I'm trying to remember his name. I was watching a documentary he was in the other day that he he made his whole career off the internet. Uh, oh, Dane Cook. Dane, Dane Cook. Uh, yeah, he came and went. So. I watched him. He wasn't funny. He doesn't do anything resembling a joke, right? I've watched him, and I go, I don't get it. I don't get this at all. Well, he created his whole fame using the Internet, and uh-huh. all of a sudden he then gets TV specials, and movie uh-huh. companies are putting him in movies. And, of course, the, mm-hmm. the TV specials failed, and the movies didn't make money, and they suddenly said, uh-huh. why were we so in love with this guy? And it was because uh-huh. they bought the hype. Yep. They bought the hype. He just put himself out there. And, you know, God bless him for going for and achieving the American dream for a while. But I've already even sold out Madison Square Garden. I got, I saw the Rolling Stones there. So uh, who the fuck knows? I don't know. People are very stupid in large groups. I know that much. So, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Now, what was I just uh, try to ignore it. I'm try- you know, my mind is just trash today. I, you know, but I'm trying to remember the, the comic who was. Uh, uh, he's in movies a lot, and he wore the leather jacket, and it's, you know, hey, you know. You remember him? Oh, Dice Clay. Dice Andrew Clay. Dice Andrew Clay. Dice Clay. Who, he by played, the I way. I saw him two weeks ago. He played the Tropicana. By the way, is a very good actor. Oh, you you know? right. he's an excellent in actor. In fact, I no think he exists. got nominated for a SAG Award again this year. Uh-huh. Well, he was in this. I haven't seen it, but they say he's in a Star Is Born, and yeah. he was very, very good. At it. Yeah, and, plays yeah. her, plays her father, and he was yeah. very good. He, I mean, uh, years ago, I watched Andrew Dice Clay when he was an actor before he uh-huh. he, and he was on uh, some show that was a spinoff from uh, Miami Vice by the same producer, and uh-huh. uh, it was uh, a crime story or something like that. And yeah, that, he was in that in the eighties. Yeah. yeah, was it called Crime Story? Am I right? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. Uh, and uh, I said, "This guy is great. He what a good uh-huh. actor." And then yep. I saw him in a picture he did. Uh, uh, oh, the opposite of sex. I think. No, was that it? No, it was. Maybe it was the opposite of sex. What was it? I can't remember uh-huh. that. Uh, but anyway, uh, just great in this movie. Just uh-huh. wonderful because he could, he could play really lovable bl- blokes, you know, lovable uh-huh. lunks. And then all of a sudden he does this stupid act, which is, you know, bas- <laughs> basically him going on stage and acting the part of a, to- of, of a, uh, of a stand-up comic. And yeah. he, was, he was just, I thought, horrible. I mean, the comedy yeah. was so stupid and gr- just klutzy and had no finesse and had no mm-hmm. nothing and I just went why did you ruin a promising acting career for this <laughs> you know he did really well with the comedy for a while and now I think he's, there's a resurgence or something he's working so, well uh, he did he did yeah. this TV show for Showtime where he plays Andrew Dice Clay who's a failed comic you know yeah. who time has passed him by and he uh-huh. was terrific in that show it was on Showtime uh-huh. they cancelled it however uh, uh-huh. But it was, I thought, a terrific show, and he was terrific in it. Anytime he's asked to act, everybody goes, "Isn't he terrific? Oh, let's give him, uh, uh-huh. let's nominate him for something." You know, this is a terrific yep. job. So why why does this guy constantly still go out and play the fucking clubs when he? Oh, I guess when he, the days he's not acting, he wants to do something. So. Gets on a stage. You know, and if he had pursued the acting career, I think he would have been bigger in acting than he ever was in that brief comedy career that he had. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Very uh, good actor. But, so. but it, he, you know, he really is just, he's terrific. And uh, he is terrific yeah. in A Star is Born. And I was looking at the nominations today for the SAG Awards, and uh, he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for A Star is Born. Oh, good. Yeah. So, you know, that doesn't He's a nice guy. I like him as a person, and uh, his kids are very cool, and he kind of raised them single handedly. So, you know, he's, he, he, he did something right. He played this character on stage, which you would think, you know, would be just the most disgusting human being on the planet. And anybody I know that has ever known him says exactly what you say that he's just a sweet, yep. decent guy. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, do you ever bump into him in Vegas or. Yeah, so I'm, uh, a couple of weeks ago he played. He's playing here again. They have me here every few weeks to play the Tropicana, the Laugh Factory there, and uh, called. You know, and on the on the weekends I go because I like to 
she calls midnight show right after Dyson's late show at ten thirty. So I usually see him there. We, we talk a little bit, you know. I don't know him well, and you know, we're not going to be best friends or anything. But I like the guy. The and only we just explain the exchange pleasantries, and he goes his way, and I go my way. So, yeah. you, 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 you suddenly made me realize that the only Jews, old Jews, who stay up <laughs> past nine o'clock at night are comics. <laughs> it's hard for me now because I would for a while, especially in San Francisco, and I wasn't working that much. I was going to bed at eight and nine o'clock, and up and up and ready to go at four thirty in the morning. You know, ready for my morning cup of coffee yeah, and bowl my, of goodness. My, my question but, is: uh, now if, I do that, and uh, it's, 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 I'm starting to change my hours, so it's not that easy at this age. I couldn't imagine getting up at four thirty in the morning because, quite frankly, I don't have much to do in my life, and to get up at four <laughs> thirty only exemplifies that. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like getting up when it's still dark out, and you know, I just put on the news or the local news or something, and uh, I just have my morning cup of coffee, which is fun, and uh, you know, just ready to chill. I remember the days. The I remember the days when we were lucky if we were in bed by five o'clock in the morning. Oh yeah, that was real lucky if we were in bed, if we were in bed by Wednesday. You know, it, we it, started partying on Monday. Yeah, those were the old days. Uh, uh, you know, I used to remember but hearing. Now, yeah. Here in New York City, I used to work overnight, okay, at uh, at uh, WPLJ. That's right. I used to listen to you. And uh, uh, so, you know, I would get my paycheck. Now, in order to deposit your paycheck in those days, there were no ATMs. Thank God uh -huh. for the ATM, right? But there were no ATMs. You had to yep. wait till the bank opened to deposit your check. So That's once right. every two I weeks, I would get off at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I would have to stay, I think, up until 9.30 <laughs> when the bank opened. Or I could go to sleep, set the alarm, and get it before the bank closed at 3.30. Do <laughs> you remember those days? Sure. And sure. Remember when you used to go and you used to write, you used to endorse your check using that pen yep. that was attached to a chain to the desk? And it was such a yep. cheap fucking pen. They could have just put a lot of pens in there and said, take one. You know? Yeah, I know. They, <laughs> the, pen is, the pen is chained because it's an official it, building. The pen was chained, and then sometimes the pen had run out of ink. <laughs> <laughs> they usually ran out of ink. And, and nobody, you had to bring your own bake if you and, were smart. And nobody Chained could, around your neck. So nobody nobody could figure out where the pens were. And if they did, they couldn't figure out how to get, get them off of the chain to put the new one on. That's I mean, right. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, banking in the good old days. I mean, I just... Back when you could smoke in the bank. I remember I was smoking cigarettes in the bank while waiting <laughs> yeah. in line. It pays to save at the Bowery, so start your savings account right away. Yeah, it's the good old days. Here's how life has changed. I wouldn't have had to wait until 9.30 in the morning. That's I'd right. say because I could go to the ATM, but you don't even have to go to the ATM anymore. You take your iPhone, you take a picture uh -huh. of the check, and you deposit it from your home. That's right. It's the modern age. Welcome to the future. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, I would have loved that. But, no, I had uh -huh. to wait till 9.30 every morning twice uh, twice a month. To deposit my <laughs> fucking, my oh, fucking boy. check. Oh, and then when you got to the bank, there was a line. Okay? Yep. And, and and half the line was smoking cigarettes. They were smoking cigarettes. Yeah, you got to smoke cigarettes. God. Hey, give me another L&M. Yeah, uh, you know. Three people ahead of me. Give me a couple of L&Ms. Give me a Pall Mall, will you? Yeah, I keep, I keep coming up with stuff that, that you, you just don't, you know, you don't say anymore. Uh, and, yeah. and things you don't do anymore because times have changed. I, I had one the other day, and I can't remember it now, but it was, uh, it, you know, it's just kind of things you would say. Uh, like, I don't, do people bum cigarettes anymore? At the, uh, because well, I, don't know, I don't know anyone who smokes cigarettes anymore. Uh, My no, God. I, well, <laughs> well, to begin with, you got to find... Can a vape? Can I have a hit of your vape? You got to find somebody who smokes. But secondly, uh, if I, at, at what, $12 a pack here in New York City... <laughs> Insane. When somebody goes, if somebody went, can I bum a cigarette? I say, are you fucking insane? Have you got a dollar twenty-five for me or whatever the cost of the cigarette yeah. is? Yeah, you know how much these things are worth now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't let anybody bum a cigarette for me now. But I'm glad yeah. I'm glad I quit before worth the price win. went up. Jeez, can I bum a tank of gas from you? Yeah, sure. Here's one hundred twelve dollars. Would you ever smoke? 
I smoked for years. I smoked for 38 years from 1971 yeah. to 2009. Well, imagine trying to do it, okay? Imagine trying to do it at $12 a pack. Oh, what do you want to think about that, especially as cheap as I am? Yeah. Oh, no. Especially when oh, you were probably, no. pro exactly. if I know you, you were probably a two-pack-a-day guy, right? I was I was a pack and a half I was a pack and a half a day guy yeah usually almost two packs a day I was I was, I was blow was a four I, pack a day guy <laughs> I was two packs a day uh, two packs a day that would be twenty four twenty four hours a day today man holy crap yeah. <laughs> I, one doctor said to, a week, I'm one doctor said to me, we got, we got to do a, a thing to uh, check and see if you have cancer. And I said, uh, how do you get that? He says, from smoking. I said, I haven't smoked for 25 years. He said, yes, but when you did, you smoked for 40 pack years. That's how he described yeah, yeah, yeah. it. 40 pack <laughs> oh, years. God. So you might have cancer anyway. And I said to oh, him, yeah. then I shouldn't have quit? Is that what you're trying to say? I shouldn't have gone <laughs> through the trouble of quitting? Anyway. Yep. Hey, we've run out of time. Already, my God, it goes by in a matter of seconds. And I won't see you till next year because we have a next couple. Year. We have about a week and a half off for the for the new year and all for Christmas and all of that junk. Oh, okay. Well, give me a date. I happen to have a calendar right in front. Oh, well, look, there's January. It's the first page. How about we'll, that? we'll we'll do that right Isn't after we finish saying goodbye to our dear friend. Stephen Pearl. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, boys and girls, men and women, ladies and gentlemen, ostriches and mandrills. I love you all. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Well, 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 there's our old friend Stephen Pearl, and we won't see him until next year. Because, by the way, I haven't sent a message off to our people yet, but uh, we're taking the Christmas week. And a little bit into the next week off uh, because it's the holiday season. We're going to be we're going to be off the air uh, from Christmas to New Year, okay, basically, and then we'll come back on a Wednesday. Uh, so anyway, oh God, I, I don't know. I got to stop taking this medicine. It's making me loopy. I can't even do simple tasks anymore, and I keep fucking up. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? Uh, you know, I, I just don't understand why they give you drugs that uh, affect you uh, uh, abruptly. You know, they should make you better all the way around. But then it doesn't, so what the hell, you know. Anyway, I'm, I just opened up the lines here. You people can talk tonight. I think I'm completely a, 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 a wreck tonight. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what I what I do I need to I need to I need a clear head and that's something that I don't uh, I don't have these days with this uh, with this little drug that uh, the doctor prescribes to me because he says oh it'll just make make the numbness go away and it's uh, you know it's a what it is it's a pill they use to prevent epilepsy yeah well at least I'm not going to have an epileptic fit on the air but I'm going to be totally uncoordinated no, I forgot to turn on. I forgot to turn on the audio network tonight for about the first I don't know two minutes. But there are nothing but spots we were running. But usually it goes on every night, you know. But we get the video is fine. In fact, the video is terrific. Look at us. If it wasn't terrific, could I do that? No, I couldn't do that. All right. Anyway, so uh, here comes Jeff Stein. First off the bat to call us, uh, saw that we were available, and uh, what do you know, he decided to give us a call. Hello there, Jeffrey. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, good morning. morning. Good, good afternoon. Morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> what you'll, time are we in? You'll get it straight eventually. Yeah. Hey, you're, you're moving all over. You're in different directions. What do you mean? I'm looking at you from a different possession of your house. You move the, you move the camera? No. Did you move your camera? No. Hmm. Not at all. Not at all. I didn't move the camera. I'm, I'm, I'm the same as I've always been. Wait a minute. Let me let me look. Hello, and hello to uh, to Rob. Oh, and uh, hello, Evening. To, hello to Phil Meyer. Is my picture normal uh, to you, Rob? Yep. Yeah. Looks good to me. Yeah. Same, same as always. So I don't know why. Oh, it's backwards now. Oh, it is. Oh, I. You know what I did? I did something the other day, mainly because I wanted to see. I wanted to see if that would happen. Okay. So let me go back to video settings. Let me go to webcam settings, 
And uh, where is it? Uh, is it, uh, is it uh, mirrored? Okay, normal. There, there we, you go. There we go. Okay. Uh, the reason I did that the other day was that they, what they have is um, if I look at, if you look at yourself as you're talking to people uh, on, the, on, on Skype, you will find that you are in reverse. Your picture is in reverse. And they do that because they think you're too stupid. And they think you need to know that your hand's here and your hand's there, and they'd be all bothered by that. But then there's a setting that said mirror. Now, what I assumed it would do, it would mirror it for me here, but it wouldn't mirror it for you out there. But unfortunately, it mirrored it for you out there. So I just went back to the old way of doing it. Hmm. What the f I, I I don't see anything in a mirror. I walk up to a mirror and it's totally blank. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> As we expected. You're a magic. You're a Trump supporter. There's no way you could look at yourself in a mirror. <laughs> and feel good about it. That's for damn sure. <laughs> at least I'm not being fooled by Schumer and Pelosi, you guys. Uh, uh, how am I being fooled by Schumer and Pelosi? Two people I can't stand. They're, they're selling you a bill of goods, and you're falling right in lockstep What, what, what bill of them. goods are they selling me that I bought? They want power, and you're supporting them. Oh, well, I'm supporting you know? them having power, absolutely. Yeah, but they have no intention of doing anything different than anyone else except lining their pockets and, and enjoying their power. How, how has... Uh, how has uh, um, uh, uh, what's Pelosi? Her name? Pelosi, how she lined her pockets? She's a very wealthy woman. She was a very wealthy oh, and woman. Donald Trump's not. She was, a, yeah, she was a very wealthy. Uh, you said he isn't. She was a very <laughs> wealthy woman before she went into uh, politics. She's a lot wealthier now. And, and How so do you is know? People well, like well, Diane well, Feinstein. What's her, net, what's her net worth now? I don't know. Uh, oh but well, I do know but if you don't know, the, how can you? She is the richest person in the in the house. Uh, really. I believe so. You're yes. going to tell me that there aren't richer people in the house, people who, who went into public service because they had enough money and they just wanted to do public service? From what I heard was that she was the wealthiest person in the house. Now, you got people like Daryl Issa. No, wait, no, a minute, wait, a, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So you're wrong about that, Phil. No, how am I wrong? You're the richest people in, com uh, in Congress, uh, Republican Daryl Issa, number one. Number Darryl two, Issa. Greg Gianforte. Number uh -huh. three, Jared Polis. Uh, those are the where, first. Where is here. Feinstein? Well, I mean, a... not Feinstein. Um, uh, Pelosi. She's a senator. In the House, I was talking about Pelosi. Now, I, I says he's a, he's a congressman? Yeah. yeah. yeah you're, wait, Phil, Phil, repeat after me. I, I know okay. it's going to be hard for you to say, I was wrong. Okay, I'll look it up and see how oh, long I was. <laughs> Matt? Word. The top, the top five. Number four. Oh wait a minute. This is uh, yeah. Um, what's this here? Of the of the fifty three lawmakers, which members of Congress have most? Oh okay, that's student debt. Uh, Pelosi's worth one hundred and twenty million. Okay. And she doesn't make the top. Uh, they only list the top three here, and I read them to you. Yeah. yeah. In this particular, so, so it's a Forbes got, article. So she's got one hundred twenty million. How much did she have before she went into Congress? Uh, I'll find that out too. Okay. Oh, boy. You, 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 may, you, may, you said that she was the richest person in Congress. Okay? That's what That's, you said. That's what you said, and it's not true. Well, let me find out. It's uh, not true. I just you, checked. I'm looking at Forbes. What do you think I'm, I'm looking at a Democratic computer or something? What do you think? Do you yes. think that Rob is sitting there lying to you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll, so these people, this according to this, uh, is how they made their money. What they all have in common, those top three, they chose the private sector first. After finding sex, uh, success on the private sector, they set their sights on the public sector. These guys came into power with money. Okay. They made their mark in technology. They built and, ex and exited businesses. Okay. Well, let's see. Why don't just, you, just like you. Phil, she's Phil, got, Phil, she's got Phil, a lot Phil hold money. on a second. No, she's Phil, got a lot Phil, of money. Phil, Phil, why don't you apologize? Because oh, no, Pelosi's no. wealth why grew don't you by 62%. Yeah. So, so uh, Pelosi has sizable assets in United Football. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, more of the Hill report. Okay. So her. Uh, so she invested her money, asset, and that's why she's worth more money now. 62%. Uh, yeah, because she made good investments. Okay. So Okay. Now, are you ready to apologize? Because you said she was the richest person in Congress. And you said She's, that she made that she made, made that wealth off the backs of Americans at a, in Congress. She made sixty two percent when she uh, on one hundred and twenty million when she was supposed to be doing the job of the American people. Maybe at one hundred and seventy eight thousand. Could it be? Could it be? Maybe she had a good stockbroker and she just didn't pay attention to it and no, accumulated no, no, that no, wealth. No, don't you oh, want no, no, all no. of these people to, to no, no. that have all of Phil, this money Phil, to put Phil, their money in a blind trust? Apologize, Phil. Apologize right. to. Nancy she's, Pelosi. I was wrong. She wasn't the richest person in, co- in Congress. Oh, okay. right. but she's damn close. All right. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, who knows? She may not even be close. Well, uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm trying to find the rest of the list. Yeah. Because the uh, only way the only way you can afford to work in Congress is to have money going in, because they only they pay shit. You know, 178 G's a year. Yes, but you out of that you have to pay staff. Out of that you have to pay for your travel. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There are guys, there are congressmen who are, and then you got to take care of your family, who your your home back where you live. You know, it's not like you give up your house or anything like that. And the guys, a lot of guys in Congress sleep in their offices. That's their choice. Nancy Uh, Pelosi is fifth. She's fifth. She damn, you know, but there was a time when Phil, she was Phil, she was that first. isn't what you said. She was there before Th- Daryl Issa was. That isn't wasn't what she. you said. All right. Well, she's damn she's damn wealthy. No, no, no. It, it, that isn't what you said. Nobody was disputing that she was wealthy. We were disputing all right. that she made all this money off of being in Congress and the- I said I was wrong. What are you going to do? Rub it in? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, you are. <laughs> absolutely. Phil. Her net worth is fifty-eight million. By the way, no, everybody who's out there has been playing our little game. You can have two drinks on that one. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it says here her average net worth is worth is average net worth fifty-eight uh, million four hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars. That's what she made this year. Uh, average so I'm net, looking at no, thing from average the, from net the hill. Her average, fine, Phil. He just said her average net worth is what? Yeah, Again, but she's a hundred years old. So if you take her net oh, worth, and you divide it by her age. That's she her average. She didn't earn fifty-eight million dollars. That's not her her salary. Okay, her. Pelosi it says Pelosi was worth it thirty-five million in two thousand ten. Uh, she reported forty-three million in assets and eight million in liabilities. Uh, she has a net worth in two thousand nine. Of twenty one million. Wait, how many but years a, ago was that, Phil? Two thousand nine. So from two thousand nine to today, uh, under the uh, celebrity, uh, what, I, where did they find it? Uh, celebrity. Um, uh, this this yeah, here it is. Uh, well, you're trying Nancy too Pelosi's hard, net worth. Phil. Celebrity you're not gonna net worth. Di- you're not going to dig yourself is, out is of the this site. hole. Uh, CelebrityNetWorth.com, and it says her net worth is $120 million. She well, says oh, uh, well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Hold on a second. Who are you going to believe, Forbes, which is Rob's, or are you going to believe... Is, this is CBS News. The other one yeah. was Forbes, only uh, the top Are you going to believe yeah, some... but you never you gonna, believe Are you going to believe some site? Are you going to believe some site called Celebrity Net Worth? Right here. It's, it's on the web, so it must be true. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad Hold you're sorry. Hold on a second. We'll go to the empirical <laughs> truth here. Hold on one moment. One moment. All right. Echo, how much is Nancy Pelosi worth? Nancy Pelosi is worth an estimated 120 million U.S. dollars. Okay. I, I want an apology. <laughs> you were wrong. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not taking uh, echoes. No, no, Al, Alex is the only one. That, uh, and then uh, I've got another thing here that says her estimated personal worth is between forty-three and two hundred and two million. Uh, she was elected. Uh, what, what's, uh, the, what's the point you're trying to make here? She, you said she was the I am, richest. I am woman. defending my you, statement. So uh, if uh, here it's one hundred and twenty million, what's Daryl Issa worth? Oh, Maybe okay. Daryl Issa uh, is uh, worth uh, three hundred three million. How much is Daryl Issa worth? Three hundred and three million. Oh, well. Yeah. Wait, let me try it again. 
Uh, Echo, how much is Daryl Issa worth? Hmm. I don't know that. No, he doesn't know. She doesn't know that. All right. Well, maybe he's worth less than uh, Nancy Pelosi, and I was right. Because you can't prove your point with your Echo. Echo, how much is Alex Bennett worth? <laughs> <laughs> so in 2016... Yeah. In 2016, wait a minute, wait a here are the numbers according. This is according to Wikipedia. Yeah. She has. Uh, I'll tell you this. Nancy yeah. Pelosi has definitely gained a lot of wealth since 2016. Really? Yes. She was number 30 at 16 million dollars in uh, 19 in in 2016. When while Daryl Issa, who's who's worth 303 million today, is was worth 283. So she's gone from, so so this this corresponds more to what I was reading in that Daryl Issa is now worth 303 here two years ago, or what, 2016 is now what, four years ago almost, three years ago, uh, he was worth 283. Nancy Pelosi is worth, what did I say, was 158 million mm -hmm. or 58 million? 100, 100. It was 120. Oh, she went from 58, I think, to 120. But you know, the thing is, what is the point? What is the point? What is the what is the what's the point? What's the point? Forget it. Look, these are the two years that Trump has been running the country, and Nancy Pelosi has profited more off of Donald Trump than oh, Daryl Issa did, and he's a Republican. He went from she went from 16 million in 2016 to 58 million in 20. Well, currently in 2018. Okay. Well, look at all of that extra profit. She owes it to Donald Trump. Yeah, how about me? How, how about me? I've lost money. Well, you're a bad investment. Yeah. <laughs> you're a bad investment. Oh, boy, Phil. You know, you, you don't gamble, but why would you gamble in the stock market? Oh, boy, Phil. Why wouldn't you buy assets like oh, gold? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Don't you read, you know, uh, there's a, there's a Phil, site that, Phil, that Phil. advertises. Phil, 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 yeah. hook with me. Yeah, I'll bust your chops. <laughs> uh, all right. So what else is, oh, I, did you see uh, during yesterday when the CEO of Google uh, was giving his testimony, mm -hmm. did you see the guy sitting behind him with the bowler hat and the phony white mustache and the monocle Imitating the uh, Bing guy. That Did seems you, like he was imitating the uh, Monopoly guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you think so? Oh, it was Monopoly guy? That yes. wasn't. But isn't that the same yeah. thing that they use for Bing? Bless no. you. No. 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 Mm -mm. Okay, so it was the Monopoly guy. Yeah. Did you notice that he wasn't there towards the end of the? Uh, I didn't. The I didn't. I didn't watch it, and I don't notice those things. Mm -hmm. I care. Oh, I cared, photo I, I cared that those asshole Republicans were so worried that when you uh, uh, Google the name Donald Trump, uh, or rather uh, Google the word idiot, a picture of Donald Trump comes up on Google. <laughs> well, They you know, seem to be very bothered by that, and the guy at Google had to explain why and that it had nothing to do with Google wanting a picture of Donald Trump to come up, but the algorithms made that come out uh, dependent upon how many other people had searched for the word idiot and put up the picture of Donald yeah. Trump. But these idiots, these morons, you know, these wonderful uh, computer people who run Congress couldn't understand what algorithms were and so on. So, Oh, I think, I think they knew they, they were asking intelligent questions and they put, they put oh, him yeah, in the that, hot seat that. when they showed that they had a memo that was from his, uh, uh, the woman that does the diversity uh, thing for uh, Google, and it said that they were able to uh, swing the election uh, towards uh, for Latinos in key states, that they were able to, you know, uh, bring out the vote for, for Latinos in key states, which means that Google was manipulating the wait election. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you, telling me that, you, are you telling me there's something wrong with getting out the vote? It wasn't a matter of just getting out the vote. They were manipulating it no. through, the, through the information that That's they were That's according providing. to what? These wonderful, wonderful computer analysts you have as Republicans in Congress? 
Yes. Yeah. These same people who don't understand algorithms? Well, I think they understand algorithms. I think that uh, the CEO of, uh, of Google was uh, on the hot seat. He got caught with his pants down, and uh, he didn't really have an answer. And any time he... Why? Well, he didn't have an answer position, on why his pants were down? Yeah. Any time he was put in a position uh, that... Uh, Perhaps that, because uh, he was bending over to say, kiss this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was bending over all right. Uh, but the the thing is, when he couldn't answer it, he says, well, I'll get you that information. And so the, one of the senators uh, said to a congressman said to him, uh, you make $100 million a year, you should have this information. I, I thought it was interesting. Oh, but really? The, the thing well, that well, well listen, why don't they go ask it Nancy Pelosi? She's rich. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Well, she's she's she yeah. was happy. Oh, forget with, it. Forget it. Let's Google not get back doing. into that bullshit of yours. You know. Yeah. All right. They. Uh, I, the thing I liked the most was the photo mugger that was behind uh, the CEO. I, I'm sorry you didn't see it. I tried to uh, give you a I heads am, up. On I'm it. trying to stay as far away from TV news as possible these days. Well, it uh, okay. Yeah. So wh where do you get your news? Huh. Where do you get oh, your from news? you, Phil? Oh, I'm glad of that. <laughs> now at least you're hearing the truth. <laughs> you get the truth. No, oh, I, 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 I do truth. things like uh, I watch the BBC, and I read uh, 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 reputable news organizations on the internet. You Did know. I hear that May uh, squeaked out uh, a win today, and that she's still uh, in a job? Yeah. Theresa May. Yeah, but but she's probably going to quit after the Brexit thing is over with. They may not even withdraw from the EU the way this is turning out. Well, you know what, what it was? Think? It was like voting for Trump. I mean, it, it they, they suddenly realized after the fact what a mistake. mistake they had made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know about that. The French are, uh, uh, are not too happy about the way things are going. And, you know, they're burning their country down right now. They're, they're not you know, burning their country down. They're protesting in the streets. Yeah. And, Have you seen? And they're supposed to do that every Tuesday for the rest of their life. Yeah. Well, sure. no, they're doing it every weekend. But, uh, you know, these guys aren't happy about uh, the, the way government is taxing them for this climate change stuff. Yeah. They're uh, they're selling them a bill of there goods. Is no, there's no there's I get I guess Phil there is no climate change correct no 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 uh, did you have some horrible fires in California the worst ever probably it was set by PG and E I I see okay yeah actually I heard there was a I don't know if, I don't know if it was PG and E but I thought it was uh, some some uh, some facility that's that emitted a spark in that's what started the yeah, whole but, thing. You That's know, what I heard. Uh, the fact that you can emit a spark and then start a conflagration like what went on in California yeah. seems to indicate that the weather and the way in which this uh, this uh, the brush and everything is tinder. Uh, uh, Our president uh, told us that you uh, didn't uh, rake. I, I fuck your president. <laughs> fuck your goddamn rake. president and the horse he fucking rode in on. Okay. Oh, well, you know. I think he was right. I think you that know, horse's it, name was Melania. Yeah. Well, if the if the Forest Service isn't uh, taking care of uh, the underbrush, you see, you've got all of these. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. 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 The the, uh, the federal the Forest Service uh, are they state or are they federal? Well, they're both. I guess. No, they're well, the, federal. Well, they're federal. Phil. They're federal, yeah. and they're under the jurisdiction of the President of the United States. So the fires were his fault. Oh, yeah, okay. All they had to do was request. But you know what? what? In California... Oh, yeah, all, all they had to do was request. This prison doesn't give shit to anybody who wants to do anything Look, for the ecology. The, the, the ecologists in California yeah, 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 don't yeah. want any uh, clear uh, cutting of forests or uh, uh, or uh, any of those types of things. You don't do say, that. That isn't how you stop forest fires, Phil, by yeah. cutting down fucking and, trees. And you have controlled burns. No, no. What you do, what you do is you have to clear. I know him. You have to clear brush. <laughs> That's for starters. Trees, oh, so you don't. Raked. You don't. You're telling me they should have raked. So 
Who's the all head right. of Who's the head of, of the federal government that should be in charge of taking yeah, care of that sort of thing? Yeah, but, you know, all the environmentalists, they don't want them to do that. Patrick, is this driving you crazy? Is your head exploding yet? No, because in Wisconsin, under this horrible, 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 horrible Republican governor that we have, yeah. at least until January 7th, yeah. uh, our local, well, not local, our state DNR does that regularly in all of our state parks and, and in the local park, the county. I see them all the time. when I Whenever I go to the park, they're clearing mm -hmm. shit out. They're in the middle of the wood. They're pulling out uh, dead wood, literally. That, and, those are Democratic uh, uh, people, dead wood. No, he, he didn't under a Republican governor. And it was the same under the Democrats. I mean, our state has always done this. So I, I fail to see where this argument is, other than I think it, it's neglect both on the state part and possibly the federal government because... Wisconsin, just like Minnesota and, and Michigan and the northern part of Illinois, is all fucking woods. How do you, mean, yeah, but you get more, more precipitation. What, what's that? You get more precipitation there. It's the droughts that, that cause the big problems. Oh, yeah. That, well, you're right there, but they still have to be clearing the shit out because we've got campers that are camping constantly yeah. all over. North but North but North. He, here here's the argument of Patrick and uh, and Phil and everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, according to people who know and are in the know, the, this last year was the worst year that we've had in history for what we would call uh, weather disasters. In 1992, we had fires in the Oakland Hills. A thousand homes burned. We're, we're not talking about that, Phil. Well, it's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. And that was caused by some uh, Phil, a fire Phil, that wasn't Phil, fully put out. Phil, I was out. there for that fire. I know so what was it, I. I know how much it devastated. Not close to what the last fire in the, in San, in California did. Not even close. Oh, you mean the the, the Malibu? Uh, I'm talking about one? paradise. The whole town oh. is gone, Phil. Yeah. And I know well. what happened in the Oakland Hills, and it was nothing like that. It was bad, but it was nothing like that. Yes, Patrick. Two things. Yes. I saw a headline in our local newspaper, which is actually just the Wisconsin, Milwaukee version of USA Today now. There's no, you know, local shit. But anyway, right. the headline was, uh, our climate's going to be um, like prehistoric times by 2035. And I was at the doctor's office yesterday, and I actually laughed out loud when I read that because I've never read such an asinine headline. And then I want to know the people that know, and then you, you say, and other people have said, um, the worst in history. Um, how far back did recorded history on, on so-called climate change well, I would have to agree with you on that question. Yes. How how do well, we know? as long as they've been keeping records, for however long they've been keeping records. Uh, yeah, but records. This, this headline said it's going to go back to prehistoric times, and we don't have records of what the weather was like in prehistoric times. <laughs> no. A lot of oxygen. We know that. For, we, know, we know that much. That's how the creatures are going to be so big. The insects, the dinosaurs, all that shit. A lot of oxygen. Really? Like 60% oxygen, I heard. Really? Yeah, we could all walk around high. Now we have, I think, like twenty percent oxygen. I don't know. I don't know what the uh, what the mix is. It's enough to keep breathing, though. So, I heard also that uh, the if we if we ever were if we ever traveled back in time to pre to sixty five million years ago and before, we probably as a species couldn't survive. You know, breathing in that air because it would be so alien to us and so. Uh, and and so caustic to us on account of how different it is. Well, the least which being the oxygen content. You know, uh, uh, humans and animals and everything adapt to their surroundings. Uh, that's Darwin's theory, which I'm sure Phil doesn't believe in because I don't think Trump believes in Darwinism. Although he's a perfect example of it. No, I believe you came from the monkey. You know, 
Uh, Remember 2001, you get him to bang it on the thing. <laughs> Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm all right. Or History of the World Part 1, where they're all masturbating in the beginning. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's seen that in the movie. <laughs> it's hilarious. What What was that? Which movie was the that? History of the World Part 1, Mel Brooks. Oh, oh yeah. The uh, intro sequence where all the monkeys are uh, erect and they're masturbating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, I'd say that's one thing that we have in common with our ancestors. We all jerked off. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. Well, they had a hell of a lot more free time. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, weren't about, we weren't so preoccupied with cleanliness either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but... You mean there was no Purell back then? <laughs> Maybe Axe. Now, today, of course. Um, Oh, I'm not. I don't. And they I had shouldn't even bring this up. Everybody just that was I it. shouldn't even bring this up. I, why am I even going to bring this up? Because this is just going to be another just stupidity fest on Phil's part. Uh, <laughs> because of the ratings and because of the entertainment factor. That's yeah. The, oh, the entertainment what? factor. This is the let's go out and commit suicide factor when he starts going at it. Uh, Cohn pleaded, uh, got his uh, three years in jail today. Yeah. Yeah. For things unrelated like? to the Trump campaign. Uh, uh wrong. So so you're wrong, Phil. Wrong, Phil. No, you're wrong. you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're, you're right. Know that the, the, the parent company of the Inquirer released released a uh, a legal document today. Yeah. Did, did you hear about that? No. Oh well so, tell him, Phil. So, uh, tell him, Rob, and let's so see what Phil to this, has to and say. I, and I actually took a picture of the screenshot that I saw on TV so I could read it to you. All right. AMI yeah. admitted... The AMI is the company. Is, it, it, AMI, the parent yeah. company of the National Enquirer, admitted it that they made a $150,000 payment in concert with the candidate's presidential campaign and in order to ensure that the woman did not publicize damaging allegations about the candidate before the 2016 election. AMI further admitted that its principal purpose in making the payment was to suppress the woman's story so as to prevent it from influencing the election. That is corroboration between what Michael Cohen said Michael Cohen said today, recently the president tweeted a statement calling me weak, and it was correct, but it was for a much different reason than he was implying. It was because time and time again, I felt it was my duty to cover up his dirty deeds. Oh, man, let's hang Trump. It's time to, to get the torches He's and the piece. pitchforks. Uh -oh. Shit. I, I think I think that's oh, the first. No, wait a minute, Phil. Phil, I think I think I think that's the first good point. <laughs> I, I, when you talk about pitch they should have said no. I think no, 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 no. I think I think I, I think that's the first important thing you've said all day. Is that we you know we want to get Trump. Uh, yeah. yeah. You speak of pit, pitchforks and torches, you make my dick hard. So uh, watch it. Watch yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm far away. Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing is. Uh, that uh, 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 how do you feel about the fact that the uh, National Enquirer says, "Yep, we did it," so that he is uh, we, for the campaign. Uh, mate, we'll see. How do you oh, feel oh, that oh. your president is now an unindicted co-conspirator <laughs> in a, in breaking campaign finance laws? Well, at least he doesn't have to pay rent. But no, no, no! Don't make a joke. You're no, asked a question. Answer, answer I'm, the question. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure that uh, i'm not ready fact. to make a comment no no no. It's you fact. say it's fact no 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 this is fact this is all legal facts i've heard, I've of, heard facts coming, coming from cases. cnc phil 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 the the comments today the national Enquirer made are in a legal almost deposition I, right that they presented okay. yes this is the to, one that keeps telling me that martians are dating jennifer Ann's aniston Okay. No, that yeah, was that was no, periodical. that was the Weekly World News, Phil. That was never the National Enquirer. Hey, it's the National Enquirer. And now the now, now admittedly, well, you know what? It was the National Enquirer to their credit, and I will give them credit for this. That broke the story on uh, the John Edwards uh, mistress and uh, love child, and they actually got an award for that. So I, I I do hold the National Enquirer in some regard. Well, we'll see. I'll I'll look at it. And uh, I'll comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when when you finally Study find out what Fox what Fox's talking point is on this, 
Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll look yeah, into it. Yeah. All I know, I know is this is this is the same this is no. the same organization no, this, that tells me this that is, Martians. Uh, no, are no, they didn't do that. The Weekly World News ran that kind of story. See, here's uh, what happened. No, Let me explain. Let me explain to you. Are you familiar with the Weekly World News? They're the ones that do all those stories about Martians, and I, I had a Martian no, it's love child. It's actually Inquirer. My mother yeah. used to no. read it, it every it was time published, It was out. published by the same company. Now, I'll tell you yeah. how it happened, because I heard yeah. this from a friend of mine who worked for the National Enquirer. The National Enquirer, at a certain point in their career, were black and white, and they used to print the Enquirer in black and white. And all of a sudden, they decided they wanted to go to color, so they put in color presses. So what to do with the black and white presses they created the Weekly World News. Okay, All right. but entirely different in 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 substance and style. Okay. Well, I quote certain news sources, and you poo-poo them. And now you're quoting no, a news no, source no, 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 that no, is no. not Wait vetted a minute. for Phil, me. Wait a Phil. Phil. No, no. I'm not quoting a news source. I am well, quoting a source. deposition this news source has made to the law, to the legal okay. people involved, well, I, saying I this is seen, what went on. Yeah, Google it, you'll find anything it. anything like that. Okay. Well, why don't you, why don't you just, why don't you just, well, go to Drudge. I bet it's on Drudge. All right, we'll go to Drudge. That I can do. Yeah, that you can do. You got that earmarked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Patrick. I have Fox News on right now, and it says, uh, I just paused it so I could read just did one line, AMI admit to working with campaign to silence stories. So that, that's on Fox News. So that's not on MSNBC. It's not on CNN. It's not on anything else. It's on Fox. And yeah. it's there. So It's a real story. Well, if it's true and if uh, they if they prove it, then I guess uh, he... There's nothing uh, to be he, proven, Phil. They've admitted to they it. They admitted to it. Yeah, well, maybe they, they signed got a deposition. Those... You know what a deposition is? Yeah, it's so you give it under uh, your sworn testimony. Uh, and under the threat of perjury. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Well, it looks like uh, he's not having a trouble. good day. <laughs> yeah. It, it looks... uh, uh, I can't find anything yet un under that. You, uh, you can't, it, Drudge doesn't have it there? No. Uh, not yet. I mean, I'm 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 doing, looking at it on the phone, so it takes a little longer. Hold on a second, Drudge. Mm -hmm. Drudge. No, I, I don't see oh, anything. Come, uh, Tribune publisher. Let's see here. Uh, uh, oh, here it is. Re uh, revealed non-prosecution uh, agreement. With National Enquirer parent company. Yeah, yeah, they, they have a. You know where, where, it's, where? That's a big story, right, people? Guess where you Drudge know. has it? He's got it buried in the second column. Uh, let me. Uh, okay, now I'm not seeing anything yet uh, un, under that that stands out. What I read you on Drudge, I'm wondering. Hmm. Hmm. The headline on Drudge, you said that uh, that other story was on like the second column. I'm wondering what the main story is. Probably something. To this this story is or this, something. Who knows? this story keeps talking about Michael Cohn and his three years in prison. Uh, oh, hey, hey. oh, U.S. Attorney's Office also announces non-prosecution agreement with American Media related to its payment of 150k to woman influence uh, uh, to a woman to influence the 2016 presidential election mm -hmm. hmm. and in their admission they admit that they were doing it and they did it to influence the election and the they uh, they did it at the at the i guess the behest or whatever of the uh, trump for president right. committee okay i say let's string them up okay you know, good it's, it's we, time. We, we have a we have a lynching party here folks yeah yeah I'm, you know i'm gonna uh brian's gonna get hard i'm gonna get the pitchforks and, and yeah, the we'd uh find us, and we'd the torches find, we'd find a tree to string them up with but where you you live there are no trees left so you know are you ready to sell the hat uh no it's gonna be a collector's item <laughs> you know what it probably will be what yeah. right. oh that oh, oh the maga hats are not going to be a collector's item there are too many of them yeah, I was thinking that as I said those yeah, words out of yeah, my mouth. Yeah. Like, uh, well, you know, yeah. I maybe maybe he'll sign it for me uh, when he's doing the perp walk. 
So uh, we'll, we'll see. You know, uh, being uh, somebody giving testimony does not necessarily get a guy uh, convicted. Well, we have You're a right. No, you're right. We're not but saying he, that, but we're saying sitting president. Hey, why can't you be that forgiving about someone like Hillary Clinton when she's giving testimony about how she was not involved in Benghazi? Uh, because Trump didn't kill anybody. Yeah, because she's a because she's a bitch woman Democrat. That's why, Phil, and you're executing yeah. a double. Trump stand. didn't kill anybody, and uh, and neither did and, she and did. neither did Hillary. Yeah, well, giving uh, how did she kill? How did she? Russians? Oh, jeez. Uh, you know, I, I, hey, I just, you know, just, you, just, you think everything's a conspiracy uh, and, unless it involves no, Trump. No, no, but what you do is you make statements like, well, she, I never murdered, he never murdered anybody. She did. No, she didn't. That's right. No, she didn't. Yeah, the four people in Benghazi. No, no, no. You know who killed them? You know who, who was responsible oh, for their death? Oh, you're saying because there was some sort of cutback? No. And what about the No, you, are, you don't want to listen to me? No, go ahead. Do you real you know who was the guy who was the ambassador who was killed? Uh, the guy from Danville. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the guy from Danville. Yeah, he lived in Danville. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, the, originally and uh, anyway, yeah. he was told by the by by the powers that be and by the CIA and so on, do not go to Benghazi. And he went oh, in so spite you, of the fact. He was told not to go to Benghazi, that it was a bad place to be because it was a hotbed, and he went and took his three people with him. Yeah. Just like that asshole, funny fucking Christian that uh, got himself shot up with arrows in that Sentinel Island. He just wouldn't listen. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. He yeah. got what you deserve. No, but he wasn't listening. No, hi, hi, Jeff. Jeff hasn't said anything tonight, and I think he should, I, outside of the fact that my, my picture was backwards. Hmm. Well, that was an uh, interesting part of the beginning, but uh, <laughs> the fact that uh, that Phil finally admitted to being full of shit on something. Yeah, mark your calendar. This is great. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just well, I think look, ready to go to bed. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, you know, nobody is, if, they're calendar. all innocent until proven guilty. And these guys may have just given uh, what Mueller wanted, uh, in order to uh, protect themselves, you know, you can't perjure. You can't commit perjury if you're lying in order to save your skin in something like that and telling people what they want to hear. Because that kind of perjury will be found out too. You 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 just don't perjure yourself at all. I mean, that's no, why that's see. why Trump's lawyers don't want Mueller talking to him because he is such a fucking liar that he'll perjure himself without even knowing he's perjuring himself. Yeah, well, he doesn't do a good job of that. Yeah. You know, some people shouldn't be put on the stand. And, uh, you know, I understand that. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're they their own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, we'll see. Uh, you know, uh, this is not good for Trump. Has he made a statement? Has he tweeted? No, about as a matter of fact, when he, when, when he was asked uh, today as he was going by a bunch of the press about mm -hmm. any of this, you know, uh, he just ignored the questions. Just ignored them. Yes, uh, Patrick. One of the things that I've noted with the president is when things get warm toward him, he seemed to... Um, the cat seems to get his tongue, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. otherwise, that mouth is going and the tweeting is, is going on everything else. But whenever anything gets near him, whether or not he's guilty of something, but something that could affect him, he really doesn't say anything. And it's been like that for two years now. Um, so this is another example of that. And... and it's just something I've personally noticed that he just goes mom and, uh, you know, or diverts it to a different topic. By the way, I feel good about talking about Trump tonight because I think in the last couple of nights we haven't. You know, last night was completely <laughs> right. So I don't mind talking about him tonight. Uh, and this is huge news. I mean, uh, yeah. this is the when was the last time a sitting president it was uh, could be indicted? Uh, uh, Nixon. No, 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 no. For criminal activity. For uh, 
No, Clinton was that wasn't uh, that wasn't uh, that's uh, political. Uh, that wasn't. A what f- did they impeach? Uh, was it Johnson back in eighteen something? Yeah, he was one of the others that got impeached. What did he get impeached for? Uh, I I can't remember now. To tell you the truth, it was. Just, I don't think anybody can. Yeah, <laughs> a uh, long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 uh, what did what did what did uh, what did uh, Clinton get impeached for? Uh, lying. Yeah, but was it a felony? No, uh, I guess it, it must have been. No, no, it's all political. This is the first time, at least in, in modern history, that a president can be, if he doesn't win in 2020, he's going to go to prison. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't doesn't look good when uh, something like this comes out, because that's enough to uh, to give any opponent. Plenty well, of, you, you uh, see, Phil, plenty Phil of let's be, let's, let's be well, Why would you let's, vote for a guy who's let, a freaking yeah. criminal? Uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, I might not. Yeah. Jeff? Yeah, but uh, uh, I'm not sure about this, but, but I would think that because he's president, he can't go to prison until he's no, no longer right. a prisoner. What they're going to do now is they're going to debate because there, there is the, there, right now this is all a debate. And, and the Democrats are going to debate whether or not they can hold the statute of limitations back because he's in office and you can't prosecute him, but they've got him. Yeah. Well, I so mean, the, uh, the uh, point uh, being that, they, they'll, they, that they're going to want to, when, whenever he gets out of office, whether it's in 2020 or 2024, God forbid. Imagine he wins. If, if he wins, it's, it's just, imagine that. It would be crazy. Well, let but, me say this. Does, let me say this. They want to be able yeah. to prosecute him when he gets out. Let me say this. Let drop. me say this. If he gets, if let's say he gets impeached, uh-huh. and let's say the offense is so immutable that even the Republicans in the Senate vote to throw him out of office. I, and I, I think. Well, wait a minute. Let me finish. That can happen. Will you let me finish? Yeah. Then he's out of office. Then they can slap him in irons. That's right. Mm-hmm. You know, if this if this is proven and and true, uh, you know, I think they might have him dead to rights. Uh, hey, oh wow! Whoa, whoa, well, folks! Dead to rights. I'm glad I'm, I'm laying down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher Stevens. Everybody uh, who's been taking drinks still- all night. Sober up. Yeah. Hey, uh, Christopher <laughs> Stevens, uh, who was the ambassador uh, in December Libya. December 12th, 2018. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Market. Christopher Stevens lived in Grass Valley. And oh, his did mother he? lives oh, in did Danville. He? Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, I, it, it uh, you know, I mean, now here's the, here's the big question, though, and this is an interesting one, because uh, it, it, we, we, the Democrats have a really snarky problem here. Uh, I would suggest if the Rep- Democrats were to ask me, don't uh, um, uh, impeach Donald Trump. And, and the reason being is that it's only going to make him more of kind of like a, uh, uh, a, martyr. a martyr in the eyes of the people who like him. Okay. Uh, but on the other hand, if the Democrats don't, their base is going to turn on them. So there, they've got a very thorny situation coming up. You know? Well, it really see we, again. We still don't really. We just have tip of the iceberg on what Mueller is going to reveal, and that can really change the picture when all that comes out. Yeah, there might be people like Phil is saying, "Hey, if all this is true, you know, I've got to change my opinion." There are probably a lot of Republicans that go, if he truly is guilty of something, I can't sit here and stand and behind him. Which is yeah, why, as a happy him. compromise, it could be yeah. palatable for the Democrats yeah. to wait until 2020 Patrick? in the run-up to the election to impeach him. Well, you're you're going to wind up with Pence. Patrick, you're going to wind up with yeah. Pence in office. Patrick. Uh, I, I think you revealed, Alan, one of the problems with the Democratic Party is if, if they don't impeach him, then they're going to turn on, on the base and the Democrats are very short-sighted. Yeah. They don't see a long game, and they don't know how to strategize. And that's up to Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to gather all of their folks and say, look, here's the plan. We're not going to impeach him because we don't want to make him a martyr, and we're going to let things continue to pile on him 
And then once it's a foregone conclusion, then the Republicans are going to be on our side, too. Right. That's the problem with the Democrats. And I've noticed this in our state, too, in Wisconsin. Yet they're very short-sighted, and the Republicans have learned how to strategize ahead of time and to see, um, you know, two or three years ahead for something. So this stuff up their side. Yeah. Uh, you know, get the base to turn against them because yeah. I think it's a good strategy not to impeach him. Let the shit pile on. And then you're going to have to have Republicans admit that, you know what, the criminal we're not voting for. And he's not a martyr. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah here's, here's the, here's the, uh, 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 the, the problem also is that he, he today said something which is, I think, incendiary. And the quote was something to this extent. Now, maybe somebody can find the actual quote. But the quote was basically, if the, if, if, uh, the uh, uh, Democrats or whoever try to impeach me, there will be a rebellion in this country. In the Senate. No, he said no, he didn't say, after. no, he didn't say in the Senate. He said the people. He said the Senate would uh, no, go after no, 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 a no, 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 no. That is not the quote that I'm looking at. Can somebody find that quote? But it basically said the people would rebel. Yeah, he said it, Alex. I just found yeah. it. Yeah. He, he people said people would try to revolt. People if would revolt if Democrats revolt. try to impeach me. By the way, look who's joining us, ladies and gentlemen. A long time ago, his guy used to be on regularly. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Wheeler is calling us. Hello, Josh. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, we just haven't got a picture on you yet. Turn. Okay, it should be coming up. Yeah. Uh, turn your camera off or on again, and that would probably do it. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Try. Josh. Josh, uh, what did you think about uh, Kavanaugh uh, so, uh, basically uh, not taking or hearing the uh, uh, Planned Parenthood case and sending it back down to the lower court? Uh, so, uh, so basically, Kavanaugh sided with the liberal side of the uh, Supreme Court. And uh, every, all of you guys were so worried that Kavanaugh was going to be uh, uh, unfair and uh, in Trump's pocket. Right? Yeah, all I saw yesterday was the headline, so I don't know. Was he the one who made the decision? I don't know if it came from his circuit. I, well, there was, no, there was no decision because they agreed not well, to right. hear it. But I think they... I, they usually vote whether or not to take cases, I think, as a group, if I remember correct. So... I don't know if he was the deciding vote or the only one, or no. Or, he he sided there. he sided with the uh, <clears throat> the uh, non conservative side of the court. Yeah, you okay. know that Josh is kind of, of our our Supreme Court expert. You know, um, yeah. maybe he'll be another Kennedy, huh? Maybe Kavanaugh will be another Kennedy. Well, I uh, there are there are some yeah. stories that Kavanaugh was not as much of a conservative as most people would like to believe. Although he did work with that, uh, uh, what's his name? Who, who Bush? Uh, no, the guy, the uh, uh, special prosecutor helped to indict uh, impeach. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Kenneth Starr. Star. Kenneth Starr. Uh, Kenneth Starr, yeah. who by the way lost his job recently. He was thrown out of the university he was at. Uh, but he, uh, you know, what you asked earlier if it was a felony, what uh, Clinton did, uh, getting his dick sucked in the Oval Office obviously wasn't a felony, but I thought lying under oath wasn't. As felony. a Jew, we call it a mitzvah, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought lying under oath was a felony. Uh, I'm not sure to Congress, maybe, yeah. Well, it, it, in any event, uh, you know, uh, I always, I always worry that in the future when they're teaching. The history of the United States, and we get to Clinton, and they say, "Well, only only two of our presidents were ever impeached. Uh, one for this. I can't remember what. Uh, do you remember what he was? What uh, uh, Johnson was impeached for? Uh, 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 Josh? Andrew Johnson. Uh, yeah, he uh, he violated what was called the Tenure in Office Act, which there was some argument between him and the Congress over whether or not he could fire members of his cabinet." Uh, mm -hmm. 
he thought he could and they thought he couldn't. And, um, you know, as the short of it, they passed a law that basically said people had to serve so long before he could fire him or something along those lines. And then he basically fired someone and, you know, dared him to impeach him. And they basically, you know, and they did. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but, you know, he was acquitted in the, in so, the Senate. Trial, so that so. would be taught. And then they would say, and then, of course, there was Clinton. And they'll say, what was he impeached for? And then you got to talk about blowjobs. You know, I mean, yeah. great American history, folks. I thought it. I thought it was lying mm. under oath. What well, yeah, for a blowjob? About a blowjob? No, that's that's why he lied. But no, but, no, but then then you're going to say, well, why did he lie, Mrs. Jones? And then Mrs. Just Jones the, is going to have just, to say, you know, just the way Josh explained the uh, Johnson's issue. They're going to say, well, he was in the Oval Office and he was getting head. And <laughs> well, the two the thing that both, lied about the it. thing that both of them had in common was Johnson. Yeah, right. <laughs> they both had problems with Johnson. My camera working? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a brand new computer that I'd never used Skype on before, so I it took me forever to get it set up, yes. or I would have called probably half an hour ago. It's just it's checking. choppy. The video's choppy. At least for me, it is. Okay. Well, it looks fine to me. Oh, you don't have uh, any kind of. It looks like strobe to me. I no, see it like. No. Oh, okay. Then don't worry Fine. about it. It's just me then. What? What the? What in the world are you doing? Hold on a second. Jesus Christ Almighty. Uh oh. Jack, stay off of the computer, will you please? Uh, oh, oh, Jesus Almighty. What is being a uh, cat manager? No, he. J Jack. Jack. Don't touch the the playlist, will you? You just you just went crazy. No, don't. You're on it now. Get off of it if you're listening. Get off of it. I don't think he can hear you. It'd be a thirty He's, second delay or he, so. No, what he does is he he completely he did this last night too. He changes the playlist that's up there, and then when he's trying to go, well, where's the where's the playlist? I don't know where the playlist is. Jack. Don't use the, the playlist effects? before the before while I'm doing my show. Do not play with the playlist, okay? All right. I don't know if he's hearing me. Anyway, where were we? <laughs> if anybody sticks around for the next show, tell him that for me, will you, please? All right. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, uh, 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 Josh, since we haven't talked in a while, what do you think about what's going on? I mean, what, is, is there going to be a case for impeachment here? And do you think that that's a distinct possibility i think it's a real possibility yeah i think that uh it's a long slow road getting there and i'm a lot of people are getting impatient but uh i almost think the fact that it took as long as it's taking is probably not good for him to be honest with you i don't know if you agree with that but as, as many things that have uh come out the guilty pleas, I mean, even Cohen aside, you know, I mean, just a lot of other issues, we still haven't really probably gotten, uh, you know, the real hammer to drop. And I, I just, I don't know, I kind of have a feeling that's probably not good for him. Yeah. Does anybody know uh, if the date of August 2015, if Trump was a candidate then? August 2015? Yeah, I'm was sure he, he declared? was. Uh, I don't know. Why? Oh, okay, because uh, in this uh, article it says, uh, according to the agreement, Pecker was the guy from National Enquirer. Uh, met yes, his Cohen. name is Pecker, as long as we're talking yeah. about Johnson's. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, he met with Cohen and at least one other member of the campaign in August of 15. At that meeting, Pecker offered to help deal with negative stories uh, about president, uh, presidential candidates' relationship with women by other well, uh, uh, and, apparently, and other apparently what's the was, date on that what's the date on that phil august august 2015 he announced his candidacy june 16th 2015 okay so he was a can yeah, but it was, was it was pecker that offered to cohen and one other person who's not named uh to to help with these negative stories so is trump uh you know guilty of this or is cohen hey, you ever heard pecker of the term guilty? the you ever heard of the term "the buck stops here"? Well, uh, yeah, but uh, you he know, wait a minute—he's the boss. 
Okay. He called the shots. He called the shots. Okay. Well, uh, you know this this thing says it was oh, uh, Pecker come, here, here, agreed to keep Cohen appraised of any negative stories. Here, here comes Jack Bishop, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, right. uh, hello, Jack. Jack. Yeah, I heard you. Really? Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you got, yeah. You got, I just didn't know that if I removed last night's show from the playlist, it affected you. It, I it, saw it, that I what saw you did what is you completely you lost the playlist altogether. Turn off your audio, Jack. Uh, you, you, you're feeding back. Well, it's off. Um, okay. I don't know wh why you're hearing it, but hey, you know, sorry about that. You never said that that was an issue, and I no. When I when I looked over there and you had completely lost the playlist, I knew that you would hit something and you wouldn't know how to get back to it. Well, that that's what technology does for America. Yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, I just don't don't do anything before the show. I'll just not do that again. I. I stand corrected, yeah. and I will follow my leader's well, orders. Well, you, you just somehow, you, and you did it last night, too. You got to some place where it changed the playlist that was up there. You know. I, I, I didn't see that happen. You better just be very careful where your cursor goes. But anyway, we're doing a show okay. here right. and not having an argument you know, about the technology. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you. Hey, uh, we'll work it out some other day. Yeah. Anyway, no love uh, lost. No yeah, love in, lost. In, in private, not on camera. Oh, yeah. Remember the, 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 can we try <laughs> to let him know I heard what he said, and it shall be followed as it was ordered. No, it's okay. You can do it. Just be very careful when you touch. touch well, I, I try to be. Yeah. But, but, you know, hey, all of this stuff, as far as I'm concerned, is evil. That's all I got to say. Yeah. We, it, what? It, it's evil? Evil. <laughs> evil. Evil. <laughs> Evil. He hates technology. Hate it with a passion. Get with it, old man. No, I think I'll just I think I'll just uh, resign myself to the old farts home and enjoy uh, my gruel in the evening and sitting by the candlelight. You mean you're going to go back to using a pencil? I never left. <laughs> Oh, You've boy. seen my handwriting. I never learned. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Well, no problem. But I just, you know, I, 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 I it, it just be careful when you're fooling around with the playlist. Not because you got it to a point where you went to search and there were these magnifying glasses all over the screen. So. Well, I didn't see that on my end of the screen. Well, so I saw it on this end of the screen. Well, that, well yeah, but, yeah, but also, but, you know. So I you had are, to I had to go over and fix it. You are, so you, you are our leader. No, I had you to go are, over and fix it so that when you looked at it, light of your intelligence. When you looked at it next, you would be able to play with it rather than wonder why all those magnifying glasses were up there. Anyway, well, 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 we'll see what happens when it's time to well, do what we do. Okay. Well, okay. Bye. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. It's uh, Jack. He does the show after us. Okay. Uh, remove person from group. Okay. Now where were we? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, Josh was saying that it's not looking that terrific. Uh, and I don't, and even Phil, who tries to take the positive approach where Trump is concerned, eh, you're not feeling it looks that great for him either. And here's what no, the problem really. is. Here's what the problem is. Um, you know, it, it, to begin with, Trump if you if you look at the history of this thing has lied continuously about this situation it's not like he has consistently stuck to the same story you know they have that scene of him in the airplane in air force yep. one where yeah, somebody talk to my attorney talk to my yep. attorney i don't know anything about this no nothing like that ever happened to now where he is almost admitting that yes we did pay her no no he does admit it. it's not almost yeah but it's a it was a private thing Right, it was a private. Thing. Well, uh, huh? You know, uh, but that isn't what Pecker says. Right, that Pecker. His Pecker and my Pecker and say Pecker, that. What? Pecker says that uh, you know he was in cahoots with or communications with Cohen and uh, Cohen. Uh, I guess Pecker hadn't made the payment yet, uh, and uh, uh, and the McDougal was going to sell her story. To another tabloid. Yes, I so, know. We know that. We know that whole story. But the thing is, it was Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels has said that she and her attorneys were told by uh, Cohn that when they asked, "Well, where's the money?" 
he said, well, the, the boss is still out of town or whatever, and he has to be the person to put the final okay on it. Yeah. We'll see how it all, uh, you know, uh, falls out. You know, it's uh, it's not a good day for Trump. Uh, I don't uh, I don't think he's happy. I don't think I don't he's seething. They say he's yeah. seething angry. Mm. Well, you know what it is. It's like uh, when when a, a, a kid in school lied about something, and eventually one thing and another happens, and he realizes he's surrounded with the truth. You know? Well, I know how he's going to fix it. How's that? Why? He's going to no. He's going to attack Iran. That might happen. We need a war. <laughs> that's the scary thing. He'll create some major diversion. Yeah, I, you know, unfortunately, that's that's a possibility. Yeah. You know, because well, that's the, the kind of character. Well, the he fact has. that you would even consider that, Phil, is Black not the, uh, saying very much of the person who we're. Well, and that's know. what all presidents have done in the past. You know, uh, all of a sudden there's a war. Look at what Bush did. What did he do? You know, Bush he, wasn't uh, having a problem. He went, though. He, he went to a he went to Iraq. His his uh, ratings weren't all that high. No, but, they, but the uh, war. that didn't have anything to do with the reason he went in there. He went in there because yeah. he wanted to get even for Daddy. Yep. And he you know, Daddy stopped short. Yeah. And the interesting thing was, did you see any Kuwaitis uh, at uh, Bush one's funeral? No. You know, yes. Considering I know that there were. Oh, there were? were. Oh, there yeah, were. Really? I, I saw um, some uh, folks in um, with the head garb and that. So I assumed that I assumed they were Kuwaiti. Uh, it, uh, part of the Kuwaiti uh, royal family. That was yeah. my assumption. Because if it wasn't for if it wasn't for the U.S. and Bush, uh, Kuwait would be speaking Iraqi. You know. Well, I, you know, they'd the, be, I think it's the same they language. Have seven so, I know it's the same language. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, well, actually, um, the DR. yeah, I mean, the Kuwaitis were a bunch of shitheads. Uh, yeah. These are the guys who said, OK, you're going to come bail us out. Good. We're going to go to Paris and hang out. And they went to Paris and they uh, they took out the top rooms in the fanciest hotel in Paris and just hung out there till the coast was clear to come home again. Yeah. I mean, these were real pricks. Yes, uh, Patrick. And I don't think they paid anything uh, to, to, for all the support we gave them yeah. and, and the military support. Pa Patrick. Uh, they, they didn't really have a hell of an army, so I may have done the same fucking thing and taken off and gone. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, really, that that was the whole reason Saddam was able to just kind of walk through. Think it was. He didn't even put any force in there. Listen, we're so, going. We're listen, like, We're going. Say, we're going on vacation. You take care of the baby. You know, I, I mean, it's I like I would have went yeah. to Paris or London or some shit, and you know, maybe uh, done a whole European tour while the war was going on. But the war yeah. only lasted what a, a hundred days or something. It was. By the way, by the way, let me ask Josh about because we haven't talked to him in a long time, and he he is uh, he he watches the Supreme Court pretty closely. He's still doing that, right, Josh? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know work a lot too. I don't uh, follow it every single day the way I'd like to, but yeah, I, I, I follow it pretty close. Yeah. What, what about uh, what are your feelings about Kavanaugh? I, I really wasn't a big fan. And and I, I should add that people will probably remember I've I've generally been very fair. Uh, yeah. Call it as I see it. You know, I I was I don't know if I'd call myself a fan of Justice Scalia, but in, in some ways I was. I mean, I'm very fair. Um, but Kavanaugh, <laughs> I I really was not a fan of him. Uh, mm. Poor choice, in my opinion. Uh, from a if, poor choice from what standpoint from from experience well, I don't or? I, I I never was happy about uh, you know I mean his demeanor obviously but but in just in general before that I mean I can understand why a person in Trump's position would have been looking for someone who in his past had been a an ardent supporter of you know broad executive power which yeah. he is known for and, and I'm you know, I'm not a fan of that. I kind of come from a historical school that 
ha- has believed that it's 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 time for the legislative branch to discontinue its abdication of certain powers to the executive the way that it has in the last you know 50 years or say you know and and he's a supporter of executive power and i you know i I think it's time to rein in some of that i think our presidency's become a little bit too powerful uh in part because the congress is you know basically uh great inept i mean you know they don't do their job a lot of time so the the presidency or the executive not 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 just trump i mean they've all expanded the powers i've you know swooped in there and and uh you know taken some control and and something like that, once they get it, they hardly ever, they're not going to give it back, you know? So, uh, I was not a fan of him for, for certain things like that. Yeah. Well, I think it's, do you think it's possible that, that we could reduce the powers of the presidency a little bit to go back to the way they were? Yeah, I think that it's, it's definitely possible to do. I don't, I don't know if it'll happen. Um, you know, uh, the Trump presidency is, is kind of, you know, he kind of said that he was going to be that kind of a guy. I think, you know, Congress was going to, you know, take control and, and all that more. But but then you you kind of see him acting the same way, you know, as, as other people. OK, you won't, you know, and I'm not going to get into a political debate, but I'm just going to give you the facts, you know. OK, you won't you won't build my border wall. Well, then I'll, I'll just have the military build it because I control the military, you know, which is. I suppose if you want to get into technicalities, it's true. But, I mean, come on. A, a common sense observer would say that's an abuse of executive power. I mean, and if Obama had said the same thing, or or even people before him, they, they'd they fall out of their chairs and die on the floor. They'd be so upset about it. Yeah. But Obama and Schumer and Hillary Clinton all called for a border wall uh, between 2008 and 2015, there there are all of these videos showing them saying how we have to control the border, and they're saying exactly. Wait what a minute! Trump wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute, Phil. Do you realize how you just extended the truth? No, I saw three videos. Can, and, but 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 even if that were one, they said defend truth. the borders. They didn't say build a wall specifically. Right, but but even if that were a hundred percent true. Political game playing uh, is not an excuse for the executive to grab power. I mean, you know, it's just not. The power must always come back and rest in the people. So the fact that Congress is uh, obstructionist or plays political games does not give the executive, no matter who it is or what party they're from or whether I love the guy or loathe the guy, is not a reason for him to grab power. So, therefore, the idea but has also, always been that if that were to happen, the people need to remove the people who allowed it to happen. Also, is not creating a, uh, a, an atmosphere of xenophobia right. one way to gain even more power. Because it's, you know, it's like uh, the old story about the, you know, the, the cat, that, who, the mouse who uh, belled the cat, you know. That, that's it, the you democratic create, you know, uh, no, cry. No, no. No, xenophobia, uh, homophobia, uh, uh, phobia, yeah, phobia. Yeah, well, I think I think uh, uh, well, we can literally say that our president is xenophobic. Yeah, there's no question about it. But wait a minute, let me finish something here. The point I'm making is is that in the case of Hillary and Obama, these terrible people, this triumvirate, triumvirate, triumvirate of evil. Uh, they they were saying they wanted to protect the borders. They didn't say we want to build a wall. Now I don't think. I, hold no, on, think let me finish, Phil. Let me finish. They talked about a wall. Let me finish. No, they didn't talk yeah. about a wall. They talked about protecting the borders. I don't think anybody in this in this on this panel would argue that we should defend our borders. That we should watch out for our borders. And and uh, uh, but we don't. Building a wall doesn't make us any safer. OK, that's a, that, that's an idiot, a fool's uh, solution. They to said the where the wall was constructed, that it reduced uh, the uh, false news, the, fake news, the, fake, news Phil, fake, news, Phil, fake, fake news, Phil, fake news, Phil, fake news, fake news, fake nah, news, nah, fake news. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, said, Phil, yeah. fake news. It's all debunked. Yeah. Said is it is it the bunk? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Be ca- be okay. be quiet a second. Did you say it's it's uh, all been debunked, Rob? Yes, yes. Of where it was In all where? debunked. I saw it on CNN. They actually they actually took point by point 
No, 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 Phil. They took it, and CNN is best at doing this. They took it point by point and went through and debunked it with facts. They're not. They. I, I'll, I'll look that. So these statements too. were never actually said. He right. he, no. he he told so sure. many mis and even they were saying it. Even Nancy and Chuck were saying it during that whole thing. You got you're 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 speaking. You're 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 not. There's no facts behind what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. All right. Patrick's got his hand up. Yes, Patrick. It's pregnant. No, all be a crap to me. I think it's about the horse shit from the liberals that no matter what we would do theoretically protecting our borders could be interpreted as xenophobia. We're protecting our borders, whether it be with a fence, whether it be with a wall, whether it be with fucking pond standing with a, uh, with a balloon, whatever it would be. <coughs> it isn't xenophobia. It's called well, I it, no no. It depends on it depends on uh, what your how your attitude is formed, and if it's formed from a oh these people come up here and they're all criminals, they're all terrible. Oh, I'm sure there are a few good ones. Or Remember they when carry he said diseases? That? Yeah, they carry diseases or whatever that kind of bullshit. That's xenophobia. Okay. Plain and, plain and simple. Now, wanting to protect your borders because maybe there are drugs coming across it and so on can be done in any number of ways without building a wall. Uh, and one of the ways is to make all those drugs legal here so there'll be no market for them. Yes. Yeah, but you, you turn people into zombies when you, uh, you, you know, even with pot and, and, yeah, and, yeah. and okay, coffee. Yeah, okay, okay, shut and up, Phil. Like, it was Patrick has 19, his hand up again. Patrick wanted to answer my question. Yeah, it was predicted in the book 1984. They called Patrick it wanted to. Oh, you're going to say Soma is 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 uh, 1984? Uh, oh, give me a break, Phil. Boy, you can't even read a book correctly. Yes, uh, Patrick. Um, you know the 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 thing is though, if if let's say you, you can label the president as a xenophobe, that doesn't mean the rest of us who want a fucking wall like me. Uh, but why do you uh, want a wall, Patrick? Why do you want a wall? Why? Because I don't want fucking people piling over. Well, then I why mean, don't you put one up along the Canadian border? It stopped the caravan. What's wrong oh, with a wall? The caravan. The caravan didn't even reach it. Yeah, they reached it. They were throwing rocks. <laughs> they were. Valley, you, you look <laughs> at the border to our north. Yeah. There isn't a flood of Americans trying to get into Canada, but yet they have pretty stringent fucking rules on getting in. Your buddy, the comedian, can't get into Canada because he had a DUI. Really? What? Yeah. Canada. Bob Rudin. Yeah. Uh, they're that strict. And by the way, he's married to a Canadian. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can fly in, you can't get in? Yeah. And yeah. It, why is it wrong for us to want to protect and to look, put a wall? I, I am. I, 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 yes. I, I look. I can. I can agree with you on the, the, the being able to keep our borders secure. On the other hand, building a wall is not going to make it any make it secure. Uh, you know. Also, remember one thing: walls, which are meant to keep people from coming in, can also keep people from coming getting out if it ever should be enforced. OK, so, you know, I'd like to have the ability to go to South America if I have to. Why? Why? To get out of this why? No, fucking why? place. It's fucking why? Trumptopia. Why? Fly? Uh, oh. Yeah, then you go over the wall. OK, well, I guess I'll just start. Fly fly I guess they'll start flying here with their drugs anyway. Uh, um, do you see they keep talking um, uh, Josh about that we are heading for a constitutional crisis and I've never had that quite defined what is a con what, what kind of constitutional crisis could we face because of all that's going on right now well I think they're worried that most of that I think revolves around they're worried that he'll fire the special prosecutor and then 
you know, that's a bit of a crisis, I suppose, because they're going to have to decide how to react to that. I mean, if he files, if he fires a special prosecutor, you know, the idea behind firing him would be to just basically end the investigation. There it goes. It goes away. And then it's going to have to be decided whether, you know, that's an impeachable offense or whether it's not, you know, if it's not an impeachable offense, that it's going to look to a lot of people in this country like a person broke the law and just got away with it because he had the power to just make it go away. I, I'm with you. I don't know if I would consider it a crisis. I, I would almost term it more like we may be headed down the road for some constitutional high drama. But yeah, you know. But I don't. I don't know if I would call it a crisis because I believe that at the end of the day, regardless of how uh, sickening I find him and and how ridiculous I find the actions of his party, mm-hmm. you know, that we'll survive it. Uh, so crisis might be a bit of an overstatement. I, I'll probably agree with you on that. Well, I was one of these people that said that when, when Trump got put into office that, you know, I consider our democracy pretty resilient and that no one president could do enough damage to hurt this country. But I began to change my opinion about that in that, yes, that's probably true if the country wants to turn around in the right direction to begin with. And secondly, if the damage that's been done can be overturned really fast. The fact is, I think the damage that Trump is doing uh, to our nation right now and to its uh, perception worldwide uh, is something that's going to linger with us for many, many years to come, you know, because it's toned the opinion that the world has of us. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Rob. My biggest fear is not, I think those things can be fixed. What I'm afraid of is the new norm and the, 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 uh, the continuation of this because suddenly it's becoming normal. The, it, a lot of his craziness is becoming so normal now that will we ever retract Forget about all the other stuff. We, you know, policy and and who our friends are and who our enemies are, and him siding up with the Russians. And now there's all this, you know, questions as to whether or not, uh, you know, he really did have any kind of. Uh, they say while he was uh, while he was campaigning, he was still trying to build a Trump Tower in Russia. Mm-hmm. So. You know, the the emoluments clause and, and not releasing tax returns. Hey, if he didn't do it, I'm not going to do it. And just just, you know, changing the way the way we did things that will never go back. Are we are we living in a, a world of reality television suddenly becoming reality? Well, that's what happened yesterday on the, in the Oval Office. Yeah. Yeah. It was like an it was episode. The same of, thing as The Apprentice. Yeah, it was an episode of The right. Apprentice. Just the, the lighting wasn't as good. No, right. <laughs> you know, it wasn't that dramatic lighting with the spotlight coming down on him. Yeah, that, that, it's that'll all be how next people. Term. It's all how people always want such government transparency. You know, transparency, which you know, don't get me wrong, I'm all for. But like that, that thing in the Oval Office yesterday, mm-hmm. that that should be behind closed doors. I mean, that made me. I don't know. I was just uncomfortable watching it. It's like. Yes, yeah, it was I, I uncomfortable, don't know. but it's I like the transparency. I, I like too. I like I that right in front. Well, of me. I, I I liked I, it I because it made that. because it made uh, made Trump look like the asshole he was. But no, I didn't think he looked like an asshole at all. I think well, he was standing up for uh, what he wanted. Privy to what and, goes on behind you clothes. know, and yeah, 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 and threatening and then, to close down the government at Christmas time. Very nice. And of then him. Pelosi and Schumer can say and leak whatever they want to leak when it's behind closed doors. No, I want to see it in front of me. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, uh, I, I'd uh, rather Pelosi squirm uh, uh, and Schumer. Do you know? Do you know? Actually, it might have been. It might have been a more civil uh, no, discussion. So. Well, it might have been a more civil discussion if cameras weren't there, but he was acting up for television. Right. Uh, no, I think I think she, uh, he was Pelosi acting was up. Trying to he, make the sure cameras that were she on. Was going to be when the cameras uh, are on, Trump is on. When the cameras are off, he can sit in a room and be maybe more uh, reasonable. Pelosi. You're not listening to, to me, sure. Phil. You don't. Yeah, li- you're not listening. To me. What did I say, Phil? When the ca- you said that when the cameras were on, Trump is on, and I'm saying that's not true. I'm saying that uh, Trump was yeah. making his point, yeah. and Pelosi, even though she probably agreed with him, mm-hmm. wants to cater to her base so that she can become Speaker of the House. Yeah. And she is always. She's going to she be Speaker of the game. House. She doesn't have to become Speaker of the House. She's going to be. Yes, well, Patrick. 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 
Um, the, the thing that I thought was interesting was that I somebody I, I was talking back and forth on Facebook, and this person said that uh, Trump looked foolish yesterday, and I said, well, the three of them look foolish, and I said, who is more foolish? The one who started it, which would be Trump, or the two that continued it on? I mean, wasn't there a way for Nancy and, and uh, Chuck to just say, you know what, we're not going to participate in this in public? Well, they were already there, and they were told that's the way he would talk to them. It wasn't like, I think, in fact, I think they did ask. Uh, for a private. He said it a few times. This should yeah. be behind closed doors, where we're where we're talking about we're talking about facts that we can uh, we can check, not just spit, spouting out things on camera. They said that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Bree's with us. Bree from Dubai. Hello, Bree. No, he's gone again. Uh, Bree, when you can't get a good connection, don't keep calling us back. <laughs> it's kind of, you know. Disruptive. Anyway, um, uh, here he is again. Bree, Bree, can you hear me? Can you can you hear me, Bree? Bree. See, if you can't have a good connection, don't keep keep trying again because it it is disruptive. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Yeah, no, they, they were they were they were they really wanted it to be private, and uh, they were not given. Shut the fuck up, and they could have just not answered. Look, look. I mean, pretty simple. Treat uh, him like a child. Right, it's pretty simple. They could have been the parents in the room and not said anything and just said, look, we're not going to participate in this in public, period. But they didn't. They, they went on. They looked like goofs. Nan, uh, you know, she there with her hands moving. Chuck looking like the slimy bastard that he is. Hey, well, listen, listen. You know, you're talking you about you're talking about two people. You're talking you're talking about two people. I'm not too terribly fond of, but I think that the president handled it rather rudely, and I think his threats uh, to close down the government, especially at Christmas time, was inappropriate. You know, he could have waited. For, he could have just put, kicked the can down the road two months and said, we'll deal with it then. This is not the season for us to close down the government. That would have been a nice thing for him to say. Pelosi said that you, she could, you couldn't. He, she said to him that he couldn't get the votes in Congress to right. uh, for, for his wall. And he said he could. Now, he said also that the reason well, that he had, wasn't attempting it was because the Senate needed 10 Demogra demographic. Uh, listen, Demogra the, only, the only thing that Trump hasn't tried yet to get his way in this deal is to say, I'll hold my breath until you let me build the wall. <laughs> well, it's coming. You know, uh, I mean, the, he's, he, I don't he's, think he's, he's acting like a petulant child, Phil. Well, it'll really be a uh, political he's the, nightmare he's, for he's him. He's the first guy that stood up. To these guys and uh, do, doesn't let them bully him. What do you mean he's the first guy to stand up to these guys? Bush stood up to them. They all stood up. Nah, but they Bush also didn't. tried. They also tried to cooperate and to try and have some kind of dialogue going back and forth that was meaningful. All Trump did was shut down any meaningful dialogue you could have possibly had yesterday. Because they said that there because was no he way thought it would look for for, it looked good for the latest episode of The Apprentice. You know, yeah, they said there was no way they'd vote for the wall. You know, they they took a position. He took a position. That's mm -hmm. that's where you start uh, when it comes to a negotiation. Mm -hmm. No, you know, yeah. and it's contentious. And, and you're saying that Trump's a good negotiator? We'll find out. Well, apparently, yeah, not. we're talking two years gets, in now. Hey, if he gets his five, yet. if he gets his five billion, I would say he's a good well, negotiator. Well, either that, or he can hold his breath till he gets it, like I said before, or we'll he see. can maybe maybe he can cry. Maybe he can yeah. cry. <laughs> And yell I don't scream. think so. Could get it under a Republican Congress. He's not going to get it under a Democratic Congress. Right. Anyway, yeah. hey, you know, uh, this is, see, see, we had our Trump night tonight. See, L last night we didn't talk about Trump hardly at all, but tonight was oh. Trump night. And you know what's nice is to have Josh back here. Will you call us more it often, is. Josh? We'd love to hear from you. When you can yeah, start. I got a new schedule, so I might be able to. To do that. Yeah, because you're always a, a voice of some kind of sanity, and what here is. Well, I'm not saying that these people are insane, but one of us is. Uh, 
I, I guess that's why you're on all those drugs, psychotropic drugs. Yeah, huh? right, right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Rob Alfano, thank you so much tonight, as well as Phil Meyer, uh, who who is starting to have his doubts, albeit small. Oh, we'll see, that's Woo-hoo! a reasonable Bri- doubt. Brian, but, uh... thank you. Josh, want to hear from you more often, pal. Uh, Jeff, nice hearing from you. And Jeff uh, Patrick Blazik, of course. And Tony, you didn't even say anything, so say something. Oh, good night. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizens panel. Why don't you guys all wave goodbye, and we'll uh, call the whole thing to a close. Bye-bye. Okay, there they go. That's the citizen panel. That's all she wrote for tonight. Uh, And and we thank them all for calling. And even uh, uh, um, Jack Bishop. uh, so uh, that you know, and we love hearing from Jack too, even though we were having a bit of a problem there with our uh, our stuff. Oh, where do I get rid of everybody? Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, after a while, I begin to forget how to do this whole thing. Anyway, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next. It's a great show, and uh, uh, you should call that one if you get a chance because uh, uh, he he's a lot of fun. Okay. And uh, then uh, uh, I'll be back again uh, tomorrow night after the exchange with Damian Chaplin at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life in the meantime. Yep, if you see her, hell or I love her. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.